Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're looking at the Media Explorer and the shortcuts, the way that you can get fast with this tool. We're looking at a new install of Reaper, and if you look at the Media Explorer's action list, the Media Explorer section of the action list, there's really not that much here. Play and stop. There's um, another play button, uh, another stop button. It's really not a lot here. You get the most out of it by using the mouse in its default state. All right, so here we are in my customized version of Reaper, and you can see there's a lot of other actions that have things assigned to them. Plus I have the SWS extension, not really using it for Media Explorer, um, but you can see that there are additional actions here. So the main things that I customized are the navigation. I made it work more like Finder, um, because when you're going from, let's say your sample library hard drive, and you're navigating through here, it's a command down to right to go to the, the next thing, and uh, command down to activate it. I wanted it to be similar, but better here, because that, that stuff you can't really customize, but in Reaper we can, to some degree, customize things. So I have sample library drive selected here. I'm going to press command down to go to there. And now I will choose uh, one of the subfolders by pressing command down. I can press up and down to go to the previous and next uh, item in the list. I can hold shift to make a selection. When I have one selected, I can press right to preview it. Spacebar to stop. Go to a different one, I can, again, press spacebar to preview. If I want to go back to the previous folder, I press left. And then I can go to another folder, like this one, command down. I've got some other options, like shift A turns on autoplay. And autoplay is when you go through the list, uh, it's going to automatically play for you. Shift T turns tempo match on and off for loop based audio files. So you want it to uh, match your tempo. For sound effects, you wouldn't ever use that. Toggling repeat is Shift R. And then, as far as adding things to the project, there are two options there's adding it on the selected track, or there's adding it to a new track. And I wish there was a lot more options for this, but unfortunately, there's not really, there's no way for us to do scripts here. We're kind of stuck with these actions. To add to a new track, we need to make sure that this option here, where is it? Default action, double click, or enter key is uh, open in a new track or on selected track. So it's on new track right now. If I double click on a on something, it will put it in at a new track. Okay. I could also press enter. That puts it on a new track. Or I can press command down and just put that on a new track. So I have the other option on a shortcut, Shift S, we'll go to the selected track. I have track one selected here. So I press enter or command down or double click it and that will pop it into that selected track. Where it works differently here is that the cursor position has gone to the end. And if you notice before, it's always been at the beginning of the inserted item. As we go through this, it's going to continually add to the same track and advance time. And if we want to go back to putting it on a new track, it's shift N, inserting it, we'll put it on a new track and the cursor doesn't advance. All right, it's a few days later and I was getting ready to publish this video. I realized I was being a dummy on something. So I was showing the shift S and shift N uh, buttons to toggle those options but I didn't realize until I was typing out the description that I could have just made a custom action that toggles that and inserts the item in the project. So I've got uh, files here. Let's turn on autoplay. Let's say we want this one. I press N to put that on a new track. I go to this one. Press N to put that on a new track. And this one, I press S to put that on the selected track. 
and I take another one, I press S to put that on the same track. So, how do we do that? Super simple. Insert media on new track, it's custom action. Insert media on new track option, and then you insert the media item. And exactly the same for this other one with that other option to uh, select a track. All right, so back to the uh, original video. I've added a shortcut for refreshing the browser. You're working away on a project and you're importing things through Finder and you have the Media Explorer still open in Reaper. Sometimes you want to refresh. And for me, Command-R works a little bit better than F5. Okay, so the next action is show source properties for current preview media. That's whichever one is being previewed here. That's this one in this case, and press Command-I. That will bring up the properties of the wave. It's information like its sample rate, how many channels, bit depth, uh, where it came from. And if we want to unload the media, instead of right-clicking and unload, we can do Shift-X. So there are quite a few actions here that you kind of need to remember, but I think the way that I've set this up makes more sense. And uh, it, it's definitely made things a lot faster for me personally. So again, if I want to go to like, if I want to go to these tambourine loops, it's pretty quick to, uh, to go through these. And if I want to do tempo matching on, or off. It's all pretty easy. You do have to take your hand off the mouse, but you could probably set this up to be even better. Whatever your preference is, I just want to make sure that you guys are aware that one, there's an action list for just the Media Explorer, and two, customize this to your liking. There's a lot of things you can do with the Media Explorer, and uh, keeping everything all inside Reaper is really helpful. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. Visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.